Welcome to the Fight Night Daily Podcast with me, Gareth Davis. On my left, Spencer the Omen Oliver. And on my right, delighted, and he's joining us on Sunday night as well, Adam Smith as our lead kind of host on the night. Gents, I'll come to you first, Spencer. Um, what have we learned today? Let's go from the top down. What have we learned about these t- b- two big bruising heavyweights? We both sat with them today, Fraser Clark and Fabio Wardley. Wardley still giving it the big one. <laughs> Fraser, well, he is really. Uh, he may feel hubris on Sunday night. He's still giving it the big one, and Fraser Clark's playing the gentle giant about to explode, the man with the pedigree. What are you seeing? I think what. What I learned today was they both recognise they're going into a serious fight and it's all on the line. They're both oozing confidence, but in different ways. So what Wardley does is he tries to play the mind games. He's like like Tyson Fury. He tries to get inside the head. He tries to get the fight won before the first bell rings. He's very, very good at that. And he's been niggling away at Fraser Clark. And the whole build-up to this, you know, he's been winding him up, getting to him. And he's got to him a couple of times, to be fair. Fraser even admitted it out there himself. But Fraser recognises, look... Forget that I'm the Olympic champion. I've got all the amateur pedigree. We're in a different sport now. Yeah, we're in professional boxing. Wardley's learned his trade on the road. 17 and 0, 16 KOs. David Adelaide last time out. Brilliant victory. Coming of age fight against Nathan Gorman. Fraser hasn't been there yet. We haven't seen him go through the levels, but he recognises he has to. So look, both guys know they're in a serious contest, that's for sure. Adam, how do you feel about it? You know, the, the fact that... Fabio Wardley maybe was a little bit upended when um, Fraser Clark walked into Ipswich Town Football Club with the Norwich shirt on, showed that he can go inside the fortress, you like, if you like, and he's got no fear at all. Oh, we love the fun and games, don't we, of the build-up, the, the needle and spice ahead of a, a fabulous fight. And, and that's what it is. It's a, it's a compelling heavyweight clash for the Lonsdale belt in front of what Ben Shalom saying 13,000 maybe the 15 OG. now maybe 15 I mean it's terrific and it takes me back to to AJ and Dillian White that rivalry there and look where the two of them went from that they Bruno up, and Gary Mason yeah, we Bruno can and Mason, we, we've got about 150 or 160 years here so with us different. we could go back and back and back <laughs> we go back to the bare knuckle days couldn't we <laughs> we could do but that what, what what was so good about AJ and Dillian was that it was an absolute fabulous build up I mean yes. the good guy the bad guy and then it was a terrific, terrific, thunderous fight. And look where the two of them have gone on from there. And I believe that both of these guys can get into that heavyweight mix out in Saudi. Fraser Clark with a wonderful amateur pedigree. He's a lovely guy, the gentle giant. And he is the underdog coming in here because he hasn't looked great as a professional, Gareth, so far. But maybe this is the coming out party. He needs that big test. Mentally, could he hold himself together? He has that possible ability to to even outclass Fabio at times but I think it's a mental battle for Fraser with Fabio what a story he comes from a white collar background he's he's, it's been a a brilliant success ride every time you see him he's almost improving getting better he's with a red hot team in Ben Davidson and he's got confidence and he's fresh and he's got so much power too no wonder he's trying to wind up Fraser because he believes he's going to go out with the belts no doubt it's a weird one isn't it because Fabio's the one with the form. Fraser hasn't had that breakthrough performance yet. And yet, if he wins this fight, Fraser, on Sunday night, he becomes the fastest ever to a British heavyweight title. Usurping Lennox Lewis, Frank Bruno, all these... I don't know if Lennox won the British, actually. He might not have, but it, it's... I can't remember now. Uh, from memory, I don't think he did. So he won the European. He won yeah, the European. I don't think he did, he but... He won the Commonwealth as well. Yeah. But, but usurping Williams. all those guys who've won the belt in 10 fights or 12 fights. So it's massive for him in many ways. Of course it is. And this, this, this is, the beauty about this fight is it's all about the unknowns. And the unknown is whether Fraser the clock and up his game and go yeah. through the levels we know that he's got the ability to do it we know it's there but can he actually execute it and I think that is the fascinating thing about this fight because if he can and he can do so perhaps it's Wardley that brings that out of him and if we see that then we've got a serious Spencer, fight. Spencer, it's one thing, though, sparring the likes of AJ and Joe Joyce and Daniel Dubois and, yes, picking up good amateur accolades, but doing it in the professional ring is another. And Fabio Wardley has sort of shocked us all by the way he's done it already mm. in a pro outing. And he's got that confidence and that swagger about him. I, I just think that that could 
it could come down to it, right? Fraser Clark may be the better boxer in here, but this is a heavyweight professional yeah. bout yeah. in a big crowd with a lot of pressure, I think, on Fraser Clark's shoulders. And the Fabio Wardley team looks super confident. I mm -hmm. think, well, we've sat with Fraser, we've, we've sat today with Fabio Wardley for Talk Sports. You can hear them on Saturday night on the show, by the way. Clark is saying categorically, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to outbox him. And if the knockout comes, it comes. Fabio Wardley's looking for a dogfight because he wants to put Fraser out of his rhythm. Gents, I'm going to put you both on standby here. You have to give me it. You can, actually, you can sit on the fence if I'm you want to. I'm not going to sit on the fence. I've I'm picked happy Fabio Wardley. I'm by sitting on the fence. Okay, I'm happy to go. Right, you I'm sit on the fence. I'll tell you no, why, no, Gareth, on, in on, a minute. I'll tell on, you why. I know who he's going for. I know who you're going I'm gonna, for. I'm happy to go. And I'll take you on on that. Absolutely. But I'll tell you what, I'm not going to... Am I going to sit on the fence? This morning I woke up thinking Fabio Wardley. Right. Listen, mate, I walked in here, I thought line. Fraser Clark. When the fight was first announced, and that's normally what I go with, when the fight's first announced, what my gut feeling was, it was Fraser Clark okay. because of the pedigree and the class. Okay. But I've seen and been around them now, and I'm not sure. I think Fabio might so, win it. So, I don't so, know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the hang beauty on. of this. Yeah. Be, be, <laughs> be careful, <laughs> Adam. You're going to get splinters, my friend. Right. He just had four picks there, so <laughs> leave it there. I'm picking Fabio Wardley. I, I may be wrong. Fabio Wardley by late stoppage. You're picking... Fabio Wardley points. Points. Okay. You picked four. I did it with AJ against Ngannou. I had four five, picks. Four, maybe five. Six, um, look, let's go, let's go to... I like the fighters too much. I let's go to Congo. Chris Congo against Florian Marku. Again, fantastic stylistic matchup. How many can I pick? Yeah, yeah, well, well, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, your, your boxer in Chris Congo yeah. with a great team in Ben Davison, yeah. Barry Smith and Lee Wiley. Yeah. They'll have a great strategy. Florian Marku, irrepressible, tenacious, getting you put to punch with him and he wants to counter you, get you on the ropes. Marku will try and take the center of the ring in this fight. They know what they're gonna do. Hit him with a long jab. He's got a seven inch reach advantage. Who wins this fight? Because we're going to go straight into it. Fraser. Do you know what? Uh, uh, Spencer. <laughs> Spencer. Spencer. Yeah, wow. Well, I'll come up to <laughs> Fraser's knee, mate. But yeah, who wins this fight? It's, like, this is an interesting one because Marku's got a great team as well in, in Grant Smith, you know, and, and they're yeah, doing great correct. things up there as well. Yeah. Success breeds success. So very interesting great one. Great sparring for, for me. me. Boston, Dalton Smith, all those. Tactically. Sort of Richards. Tactically. You finished? Tactic. No, I haven't. <laughs> Tactic. Tact Just don't start. Don't question. start. Just Tactically, like it's about who yeah. gets it, who gets it right, who gets it wrong. It's simple as this. We know how it's going to go. Marco's going to go for it. We, there's, there's no secret. He's going to go. He's going to push forward. He's going to try and outwork him, break him, yeah. and get him late. Awesome. Is it is it a possibility? Yes. Also, flip it over. You go Chris Congo. He's going to use his height and his reach. He's going to keep it as long for his pot. Uh, um, Keep it long for as long as possible. Yes. If he can do that and he can take him into the second half of the fight and he can keep it long for seven or eight rounds, because he will have to go in and have a dogfight at some point. Because Marku will get there you at some point. You never kept it long, did you? you know, I, I love the little dogfight. No, but you, you know, know how Marku, you, you yeah, fought absolutely. like Marku fights. If he can you keep it long for long enough, he can, like he can nick it on points. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. You're exciting to watch. So is Florian Marku. He's fantastic to watch. Absolutely. But Chris Congo is a better boxer, and he's got Ben Davison in the corner. And Ben is so, Ben is red hot at the moment. I fancy Congo in this. I think that Marku will really, really push the pressure. I think it will suit Chris Congo. I think. Look, he's not going to. Marku's going to have no respect for Congo's power. However, I think the boxer in this one probably just nicks it. This. I'm going to do an Adam Smith. I'm going to go either Congo or Marku. Um, and finally, <laughs> hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Can I? Can I go? Can I? No, but in the last one you had five Marku picks. Oh, do, you, do you want to ask? Do you want to ask me who I think is going to win? Welcome to, Welcome to chaos. Welcome to chaos. I went to see Florian last week. Did you see him? Yeah, but hold on. Does, does anyone, want to watch does anyone you care what, what I think? No, not at the moment because we're right, moving I'm, on to the next I'm fight. I'm going Chris no, Congo. Go. Chris Congo points. You now because I've, I've changed my mind. I'll oh, get out of here. Go on. <laughs> it's, it's a pick em, put it that way. <laughs> Gents, it's very brilliant, this. Um, now, 50, 50 fights is what yeah, they are. Right? Mikhail Lawal now. Mikhail Lawal and um, Vidal Riley. That's yeah. a fascinating fight. Yeah. Isaac Chamberlain's going to be round and about as well. Yeah. If Riley wins, Isaac Chamberlain's going to be pushing for that fight. Yeah. Who wins this? Lawal didn't explode. He stayed in the box against um, Isaac Chamberlain, didn't he, at the York Hall. Never really provided a fight we wanted. They both stayed in the box, to be honest. We didn't get the fight we wanted. Who wins this? 
and who's going to be fighting Chamberlain next? Well, I thought Isaac was really good that night. I thought he boxed a beautiful fight and uh, you know, hats off to him. He's had a real tough career, Isaac Chamberlain, and I like the, what he did in that fight against the Wild. I think this is Vidal. Closed him down. I yeah. think this is Vidal Riley's fight. I think it's a, it's a t t perfect timing. I think Vidal's on the way up. I, uh, you know, I've known him for a long time. He's been in and around boxing for forever. He was a very good amateur. And I think he's just, he's going to be a sort of slow burner, Vidal. But uh, I think this is the right fight at the right time. I like Mikel Lowell, but I think he's a little bit below Vidal in terms of level. Let me tell you one thing about Mikel Lowell. A happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. And what we see with Mikel Lowell and his mannerisms in the build-up to this one was not what we saw when he was boxing Isaac Chamberlain. When he boxed Chamberlain, he was up uptight, tense. In you can see that he was, he, yeah. Yeah, he, was, he, he wasn't quite right. He's been much more outspoken in this one. He seems very happy. So you can't write Lowell off. He's not, very heavy-handed. Very heavy-handed. And again, this is about... This is, all, this, yeah, this is all about can Riley step up. It's, that's the unknowns. Like if he, Fraser Clark. Absolutely. Like he's got the pedigree. He's got the pedigree. I think Vidal Riley steps 50 -50 up. Fight. I think Fraser Clark steps up but might not win. Yeah. It's going to be a great fight. I'm going Vidal Riley points. I think so. Yeah, I'll go Riley points. Yeah, I think Riley points. So I'll go in agreeing. And, th and the On fact we're finally agree. in agreement. In? Let's do. Let's. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, we're agreed. Finally, it's going to be a lot of fun on Sunday night, I can tell you that. Um, finally, Ben Whitaker, and, oh. and this is a really short one. Obviously, um, he's fighting a, a young fighter in Leon who's seven and one, I think he is. I'd spoken to his team. They believe they're going to give Ben the hardest fight he's had so far in his career. But I want to ask you both, do we believe that Ben Whitaker's going to get a point deducted? on Sunday night for showboating. No, yes, I don't no. think so. I don't care because I love Ben Whitaker. He is Marmite and for me, not only has he got the talent that I believe that can take him to the top, he is so dedicated. I was at Joby Clayton's gym the other day. That kid is so hungry for success and all this flash showboating and what he does in the ring, that's how he loves to fight, right? He likes to- Mesmerize his opponents. Mesmerizing and that's his and natural thing. He doesn't really know yeah. what he's gonna do next sometimes, but the talent and the hard work he puts in I tell you what, that's a winning combination. For me, that guy's going to be a world champion. Yeah, the showboating. The showboating is there throughout his career. Forget about when he gets to a certain level. He's not going to be able to use that. He's not going to be able to show that. They said that about Nassim Hamid. We don't followed his career all the way. When he got to that level, yes, he was still showboating. I think Ben Whitaker wins, and I think he wins late, late on in the fight. I think Leon Willings will come out of this with pride, and he'll come out of this with merit as well. No, I think that no, but he's a good fighter. Yeah. He's a tough fighter, and he's another kid that likes to showboat as well. But let's go for Whitaker inside the distance. It's a wrap. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Spencer. We will see you on Sunday night, six six o'clock on Talksport Two, eight thirty on Talksport One. <laughs> Is it the other way around? No, you're right, but okay. you're just struggling to get it out. No, <laughs> I've struggled all week. It's something Freudian in the timings. Um, I've got, I'm lost it again. 6 p.m. on TalkSport 2. 8.30 p.m. on TalkSport 1. Us three, John Rawlings. Don't miss it. The oldest commentary team you've ever seen. Ever. What, what, ever. About, what about the watch-along? <laughs>